Hello everyone, I'm Santanaka. Nice to meet you. Today I will explain practical uses of RenClone. RenClone is an open source command line tool for efficiently managing, synchronizing, and backing up data between cloud storage services. In the Windows version of Stable Diffusion Web UI, the output folder for images is as shown in the video. We will change the output destination of the images based on online storage or FTP settings. Although it is possible to use symbolic links, using Recalone allows you to handle over 80 different storage services, making it more flexible. Let's get started with the practical demonstration. First, launch the command prompt and configure the remote destination. There were many compatible storage options, so I was unsure which one to choose, but I decided to save the images here based on SFTP connection information. Since there is ample storage on a simple rental server where you can easily create something like WordPress, we will set it up to output images to this rental server. Upon hearing this, some might think, Really? Can I assume that the images will be saved somewhere other than my own computer? Yes, viewers, by saving images online, you can share them with others or view them immediately in a browser, among other possibilities. I see. This method seems difficult with symbolic links. Yes. While symbolic links are relatively easy with Dropbox or Google Drive, it is challenging to set up based on connection information. Another possible method, besides using our clone, is to use a script to move files once they are saved locally. For example, you can use batch files or shell scripts to regularly check files saved in a local directory and move them to remote storage. This makes it easier to handle specific cloud storage services. Well, I don't think anyone would do that, but if you really want to know, I have explained it in the link provided in the description of the video. This is interesting. However, it lacks a bit of real-time capability. Actually, I have also explained a method to, to monitor file system events and move files as soon as they are created in the linked article. In the meantime, we have finished setting up the remote storage and have reached the point of mounting it as the image output destination. Oh, there was an error. Since it didn't work no matter how many times I tried, I will introduce the solution. We will use a tool called WinFSV to solve this problem. In short, it is a toolkit for implementing user space file systems in a Windows environment. I would like to explain a little about this. By installing WinFSP, you can implement custom file systems in user space and access them through the standard Windows file system interface. Oh, there's such a handy tool. But there's some configuration needed after installation, right? No, WinFSP is designed to be used immediately without any special configuration after installation. WinFSP itself is a tool that provides libraries and drivers to support the implementation of user space file systems. While it does not directly resolve compatibility issues between Windows and Linux file systems, Let's consider it a tool that assists in resolving the error we encountered this time. So, you just need to double-click to install it. It's nice that there's no need for special configuration after installing WinFSP. I don't quite understand how it works, but it's good to know. Yes, however, you should check if it's working after installation. Let's check if... The service is running in the service manager. It seems to be operating correctly. Also, the installation folder for WinFSP is usually as shown below. This should now allow us to mount the remote storage on our machine. Enter the command to set the image output destination to the remote storage, just like before. The same error occurred but I believe this can be resolved by deleting the folder specified in the command, as it already exists. This was just a simple mistake, and in any case, the mount wouldn't work without installing WinFSP. Now that I have deleted the folder, I will re-enter the same command. Oh, it seems to have worked this time. 
Yes, let's check in Explorer. When you mount remote storage with ArcLone, the icon of the mounted folder is different from the usual folder icon. This seems to indicate that the mounted remote storage is using a specific file system or protocol. Since we have the opportunity, let's actually create an image and see if the results are as expected. Since the images are saved to the remote destination, they don't appear in the usual location. Let's check if the files exist in the mounted folder. When you mount remote storage, the files appear to be local, but they are actually on the remote storage. Just to be sure, let's connect to the rental server and verify. The files are definitely there, but the problem is that the mount gets disconnected when the computer restarts. So, next we will configure it to mount automatically at startup. At first, I achieved this with a batch file, but having the command prompt open all the time was unsightly. By using NSSM to run Rookloan as a service, you can solve the problem of the command prompt remaining open. In the video, NSSM is downloaded and extracted to an appropriate folder. Although I don't think many people will do this, for example, by using NSSM to run a script in a Python virtual environment as a service, you can close the command prompt while the program continues to run in the background. Now, this is where NSSM comes into play. The NSSM configuration window has appeared. First, we want to set up Break Clone as a service, so specify the location of the program. Enter the command shown in the video in the Arguments field. I will explain the meaning of the command step by step. The command is related to our clone's mount functionality. The configuration file contains the connection information for the remote storage used by Arcon. We can check the location of the configuration file with a command. So let's try it now. I opened the file in Notepad the other day, and it indeed contained the connection information for the registered remote storage. Oh, we have identified the location of the configuration file. Entered this displayed configuration file location in the specified place. This varies depending on the user, but it includes the remote connection name and the remote directory. Next is the output destination for images on Windows. Our clone also has several VFS cache modes, each handling files in different ways. I will explain the main modes briefly. Having a cache mode may solve the delay in files output by some applications. Although the details of the process differ depending on the cache mode, ultimately the files will be saved to online storage regardless of the mode. Enabling cache mode works effectively for files that are frequently accessed. I don't think swimsuits are really relevant here, but I understand well. Now that we understand the meaning of the command, we are in the final stage of using NSSM to set our clone as a service. It seems to have worked. Let's open the Window Service Manager and verify that it is registered correctly. Since we found it, let's start the service. Even a small mistake can cause an error, so we need to be careful. I see. This is how it runs in the background. Yes. After starting the service, the remote storage is mounted like this. Next, we will check this on Ubuntu, but this content is useful for those using WSL on Windows. In Windows, an error occurred when trying to mount to an existing folder. But in Ubuntu, Reclone was able to mount to an existing directory without any issues. We will configure it to mount at System Startup. This time, assuming that the connection to Dropbox is already set up, we will refer to the Reclone official page for the steps. According to the explanation, we need to create one symbolic link and two unit files. We will create the files, adjusting them to fit our computer's environment. First, we will create the symbolic link. However, some of you might be wondering, um, what is a symbolic link? A symbolic link is a special file that points to a reference of another file or directory. Think of it as a kind of shortcut. 
Next, we will create the mount unit files. The content and file names should be modified according to the environment, using the rclone official page as a reference. Once you have written it, save and close the file. Here, I need to mention something extremely important. It is necessary to match the unit file name with the directory path. If they do not match, the system cannot accurately determine which directory to mount, leading to configuration errors or malfunctions. Therefore, in this case, the unit file name and the directory name of the image output destination must be the same. I see, there were times when I wondered why the file names needed to be so long. Similarly, we will create another Automat unit file. This file should also be written and saved according to the previous rules, adjusted for your environment. Once this is done, reload the system daemon to reflect the changes in the unit files. Then, enable the automount unit. Finally, let's start the automount unit. Oh, there was an error. As I was trying different things, I found a reference in the mount unit file similar to what was shown in the video. But upon investigation, this directory did not exist. So, I will create this directory and uh, set the appropriate permissions. Now that it is created, I will try starting the service again. This seems quite troublesome. It looks difficult, but did you figure out the cause? Yes, after taking a break, I figured out the cause. I will start over from the beginning. Creating this symbolic link and the cache directory is the same. The issue lies in how the mount unit file was created. The content of the file is the same, but did anyone notice? This is strange. The file name seems off. Yes, that's correct. Let me explain this. There is something called an escape sequence, which is a special code used to accurately represent certain characters and symbols. The cause of the error was that the directory name contained hyphens. Usually, I don't use special characters or symbols in directory names, but the directory created automatically when cloning with Git included these. This was an oversight. There are other escape sequences as well, so we should be careful. Yes, we will also create the next automat unit file with file names according to this rule. Oh, and be careful not to use escape sequences in the contents of unit files or configuration files, as they are generally not used there. There are many other situations where escaping is necessary, so why not take this opportunity to learn about it? When enabling or starting a service, be sure to input the file names carefully. This time, no errors appeared, so let's check the directory. So, if we follow this rule, it should work well even in Windows WSL. Yes. Ultimately, if these things are difficult, avoiding special characters in directory names and file names is effective in preventing confusion. Since we have the opportunity, let's create an image to check if everything is working correctly. Oh, in the case of Dropbox, the images display well online. Yes. Even if the images don't display well in the browser, they are there, so it might be an issue with the connection speed or the transfer port goal. Well then, everyone, see you again. Goodbye.